get the wig? You know what? This, this, um, I, I, I know that Beyonce wears a wig like this in Drunken Love, but you have to understand, this wig is at least five years old. This is one of my many gym wigs. Because when you go to the gym and you sweat, you know, what I, the, you know what I mean? This is my first time wearing it on the show. Um, this is also the wig that I had with the bikini when we were away in, um, wherever, in Virgin Gorda two weeks ago. But the reason that I am so happy is because these jeans, and you know I'm a fatty in my mind. A, once a fatty, always a fatty. Let me get over here so you can say. Oh. These, these jeans, no, 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 but you, you don't know the rest. Cause I know TV adds weight and everything, but I am now a size 28 jean. 28. And. I just, want you to know, I just want you to know that like when I graduated from high school, I was wearing a size 34. I have never been a 28 in my entire life. I, I feel like doing Hot Topic standing the whole time, giving you profiles. Now I know I need a butt, but don't you worry. I do my lunges and um, you, have to you have to choose. It's kind of like you can't have both, especially when you're five feet 11. You can't have giant boobs and a giant butt. You have to choose one or the other. I've made my choice. <laughs> um, anyway, all right, so speaking of giant butts, let's talk about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. <laughs> uh, last week, you know, Kim and Kanye got into this fight with this 18-year-old boy. The boy yelled uh, that, that Kim was an N-word lover. And remember, she was in the stairwell of the furniture store about to go up to meet Kanye, who was already upstairs. She was late for an appointment. They're shopping for new furniture for their house. The chiropractor was downstairs and the boy was going into the chiropractor and um, it all started because TMZ, the boy was calling um, like, um, the, the paparazzi names, allegedly. And then Kim got involved and said, that's not nice to use. And he's like, really? You know, N word, N word to her. Anyway, so Kanye came to defend his woman in the waiting room of the chiropractor's office. You know this story, um, he allegedly, um, some people say he tapped the boy light. Others say, others say that he beat the stew out of the boy. And a, doc, and a doctor had to pull uh, Kanye off the boy. Anyway, now according to TMZ, allegedly, 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 this boy. <laughs> um, the lawyer lady upstairs. <laughs> You're ringing in my head, I know. Um, according to TMZ, the boy wants to settle the case without going to trial publicly. He wants um, a very high six-figure settlement. Um, I say Kanye should settle, and this is why. This is why, because it's not like he's settling because he's being accused of being a child molester or, or a woman beater or something like that. He's accused of doing something that we can very well picture him doing, even though I'll continue to say allegedly, but in my mind, okay. Uh, it, it, it's nothing for Kanye to peel off 500, uh, you know, $800,000 for this. Just make the story go away. Because if they go to trial, they're going to have to continually dig and follow him. By settling, you make it go away, Kanye. And then you need some serious anger management. Because right now, what you have done by getting angry at this little boy. Now what you've done by getting angry at this little boy is you let the rest of us know that we can get an easy payday just by saying something off color to you or your girl. Right? It, it's, like, it's like back when Mike Tyson was fighting, you know, and, and, and always in the nightclubs and stuff. But, you know, fighting, you know, professionally. People would try to bait Mike all the time. And sometimes he'd fall for it and other times he wouldn't. But, you know, don't let, don't let them do that to you, uh, crazy. Uh, just <laughs> set, settle the case and, and, and then handle your handle up here. Yeah. I was, um... I was talking with you about Drew Barrymore yesterday, making the comparison that Lindsay Lohan can clean up her life because if Robert Downey Jr. and Drew Barrymore can do it, everyone can do it. And I did not have the official stats, you know, more on the Drew Barrymore story so you understand what, like I revere this woman, you know. Can't tell you a movie she's been in other than E.T. Um, I think, no, but, but listen. Sometimes what happens with these stars is you all's personal lives uh, trump your actual careers. And for me, there's nothing wrong with that because I'm a Hot Topics girl anyway, so, you know, I like to know the tea. 
Um, Drew was in rehab when she was 13. I did my research. She was in rehab when she was 13. You know, she was on everything at that point. Um, she got emancipated from her parents because I think she wasn't brought up. She was dragged up. You know, her mom, Jade, you know, I guess didn't do right by her. Jade has since been kicked out of Drew's life um, while Drew is now married to um, uh, Will Koppelman and they, she's got Olive, the little baby, and she's got a baby that she's about to give birth to. And all she wants to do is have the station wagon and the white picket fence, and I guess her mother is still toxic in her life. But she was emancipated from um, her people at 15, and she posed for Playboy at 19. And that's just the beginning of the Drew Barrymore story. Now she's 37 years old and she straightened herself up enough that, that she's, I don't, I, I just look at her, she's like, uh, she's what you can be if you just get off the drugs and the booze. Um, and you know what? And she doesn't want her daughter, Olive, to follow her footsteps. She told ABC News that she has no regrets regarding her past, but she would never let Olive pose for Playboy. Yeah. Now see, I, I find there to be nothing wrong with that. You know, if you share with your kids what you did and then tell them why you did it instead of them hearing it from their classmates or reading it to, like I'm an open book with our son. He knows everything and and there are a lot of things that, of course, you better never, you know, or, or I'll throw you down the steps and crack your skull. <laughs> and when he comes to me with why, but you did it, and, and uh, th but for the grace of God, I am here to tell you this story because I could be dead. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in conclusion, Lindsay, you know, you're only 27. If you just clean up your act, you can be like Drew. Or Robert Downey Jr. All right. Who in the audience loves, uh, who of the ladies, uh, who loves a strip club? I know that I seem like all kinds of fun to you all, but the fastest way to turn me off is to surprise me with a stripper. When my sister Wanda got married, I threw the bachelor party and um, I was the main, main girl. What do you call that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was the maid of honor and then the other girls. And so I was kind of overruled and I was young. She's been married for like 25 years. I was young and, and still trying to find myself as a woman. And I think because so many women love strip clubs, I think that I just kind of went along to get along. And my mom was there and everything. <laughs> having fun, daddy. I am not the strip club person. I just don't, I don't, I just don't like it. I don't get it. I, I just don't like, don't touch me. Don't twerk in my face. Don't, don't sit on my lap. I'm not gonna stuff dollars. I don't even, I'm going home. Joe Manganella, everybody, is putting his uh, experience as a stripper in Magic Mike to good use. He's talking about opening a male strip club. I don't care if they look as good as Joe Manganiello. I just don't want to see you twerk on me. So I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. Of course, it won't be him stripping, and most of the guys at the club are not going to look this good, honey, because he is, he, he really is the bee's knees, the cat's meow. Yeah, he's a good one. Exactly. Guys like that scare me, it's too much work. <laughs> like guys built like this would think a 28 is too big. You need to get down to a size zero fat, so. You know, it's just it's too much work. You know, is that full fat salad dressing you're using? Put it back. How many times a week, this week did you eat steak? I just can't deal with the food Nazi thing, so. In my mind, to look this good, you're a food Nazi to your girlfriend or your wife. Uh, all right, so moving along, um, one of Days of Our, do you watch Days of Our Lives? Oh. Yeah, you know, soap operas are falling by the wayside, but Days of Our Lives has been on for like 30 years, and I understand it's still going strong. We have a few Days of Our Life nistas here at Wendy, you know, on the staff. 
So Allison Sweeney, our friend who plays Sam Brady on Days of Our Lives, is quitting the show after being on for 21 years. Oh, please, she's got a really good job over there at The Biggest Loser. You know what I mean? The Biggest Loser is a good show. That show has several more years to be on TV. Allison's worth $7 million right now. She's been on Days of Our I know, I know, it's a good little life. She's married to a cop. Oh. Judging? He's a cop. See, this is the problem why you're still single then. I mean, whether you're an actress or you're a nurse, don't turn your nose up to the common guy. I happen to always reference the plumber, but you know, you know, the, a plumber, a cop, whatever. Allison did it right. You never see her falling out of a club. The guy didn't marry her and quit his job to live off her $7 million. They've got two beautiful children, an 11-year-old and a five-year-old. Uh, a nine, a nine-year-old, a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. She's been on that show since she was 16. It's a lot of work doing soap opera and doing The Biggest Loser. She has a very, very quiet life there in California. A, a really decent woman. She's been here before. She's delightful to talk to. She is, when you think of the girl next door, that would be Allison Sweeney. So good, you know, I'm glad that she's leaving the soap because her priorities are probably with her kids. You know, the, the five-year-old's about to go into first grade. The nine-year-old starting to maybe act out a little bit. You, you know when their personalities really get good when they're nine, you know, so she needs to spend more time at home. You know, her husband's out copping. And uh, you know, she has a nice group of girlfriends. Um, you know, she used to have the show on the TV Guide Network. It only lasted for like eight episodes, but they would go to each other's house and cook food and drink wine. And her friends are, I used to watch the show. She invited me to, hi Allison. She invited me to be part of the group of friends, only it's way over there in LA and I have to do this show every day. And I got my own home to deal with, so I respectively had to say no. But it's fun, they, they, the, uh, Brooke Burke is one of her friends and Tia Tamara. Uh, T yeah, I get confused when there's twins as to which one is which. But one of those Tia Tamaras and, um, <laughs> Anyway, but, but good luck, uh, Allison Sweeney. You're a nice woman, yeah, good luck. So Arnold Schwarzenegger has a new job that's getting him a 30, excuse me, a th no, not a new job. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold, oh. all due respect, you are one pull away from being Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Honest to God. Well, anyway, Arnold is getting paid $3 million for a 30-second commercial for Bud Light during the Super Bowl. Do you wanna have a sneak peek and then we're gonna talk about it? Okay, hit it. Surprise. Creepy, but, uh, but it's a $3 million paycheck. And then my producers in our meeting, you know, about hot topics this morning, they said, well, why would Arnold, Mr. Fitness, be advertising beer? And I said, because first of all, it's light beer. <laughs> Second of all, Arnold's, Arnold's um, main fans are like, like guys over 40 who like beer, but they also realize that a pot belly is not sexy, and so everybody's doing something. We girls aren't the only ones doing, doing stuff. You know, these guys are very vain these days and well aware that they have to keep their sex. I love beer. I haven't had a, I haven't had a beer, I haven't had a beer in about 18 years. But I used to love beer, and I'm good at a keg party. And I'm, I, just, I just love beer. Uh, and I get it. So that was just a little teaser. I guess we'll see the rest of the commercial during the Super Bowl um, when you're watching. All right, so. Um, <laughs> Katy Perry looks so hot on the cover of GQ magazine that I had to make her my hot shot of the day. Whoa! Hit it. I 
I just love her so much. You know, I always tell you her music makes me feel like I'm 15, you know, singing loud. I open the sunroof and sing like nobody's looking at me through the car. I put the windows down and let my wig blow. And I know all the words. And so, um, by the way, doesn't she have the best boobs ever? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Her boobs are so good. They're big, but they're not too big. And the rest of her is so thin. And she talks about her boobs. She says she prayed for boobs like that and it worked. Oh, I don't have the quote. But you know what she said? Isn't that good? Yeah. Inside the magazine, she says, when she was a little girl, she used to look down at the edge of her bed to, while she was laying down at her feet and she prayed God for boobs big enough so she wouldn't see her feet. <laughs> and, and then she said something funny. Little did I know that when I lay down with these boobs, they fall under my arms. <laughs> That's so funny. I like her. Hi, Katie. All right. The day that the Oscar nominations came out, ow, my knee is falling asleep. Damn jeans. <laughs> um, the day that the Oscar nominations came out, I was talking to you, and one of the things that I said is, you know, I don't even remember the movies that came out like last February, March, and April and stuff. It, it, it seemed to me that if you want an Oscar, you don't release your movie until like the month before the Oscars come out because everybody forgets. Well, this is the case of uh, the movie director, Lee Daniels. The butler did not get a nod for anything for the Oscar, the butler. And, and Lee says that he's not concerned about it. And normally I would say, mm-hmm, defense mechanism, except, you know, awards are really a very, very political thing. Uh, I mean, Oprah was in this movie. He probably thought that, you know, it would get at least a little something. It also was a really good movie. Did you see, did you see The Butler? Um, uh, you know, he says that he didn't make it for the awards. He made it for the art. I believe that. And you know what? And awards don't define you. Since we've uh, had this talk show, what are we in our fifth season? All right, uh, in the beginning of our first season, I got one of two awards that I've gotten this entire time. I got the New Now Next Award from the Logo Channel for the, the next big thing, which I, yeah. And, and the Fashion Queens gave me the Gag Award last week or the other weekend. And, Several of my staffers have won awards, the Emmy. You know, I think uh, my director, uh, Deb, you, you got the Emmy for the show? It, not this one, but in the past. In the past, on other shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Marilyn got the Emmy for the lighting, correct? Yes, she did. Antoine got an Emmy for the show for my wigs. There are several Emmy winners from on this show. And, and I'm like this, okay? You don't have to nominate me for an Emmy because I already know this is the best show on daytime TV. And, and I love the other hosts, but they're not better than me. <laughs>